We're back in the 90s and we have a printer going and I'm gonna go sleep some vampires. Hey all you epic badasses, Alicia here from Vertvix and Studios and welcome to my series on digital sculpting for cosplay and costume creation. If 3D seems like a big scary monster to you, don't worry, I'm here to help you integrate digital sculpting and 3D printing into your workflow. In the last video, we covered ZBrush basics. Now, if you haven't seen that, you can just click right here to check it out so that you're up to speed before we continue. And now, what we've all been waiting for, let's talk about sculpting! Yay, my favorite part of this whole process. I'm super excited. All right, now let's bring that back down a notch because seriously, sculpting is fun, it's creative, and it's super organic, right? Well, I mean, kind of. It's all of those things. It's fun, it's creative, it's awesome, but there's a process. Well, I love my process so much that I made a flowchart. So basically, we have to make a base mesh. Then we gotta do a block out, shape block out that is. You're gonna go from large, medium, to smaller shapes. Then, we're going to retopo our mesh using something like C Remesher. Next, we're gonna refine our sculpt. And now normally when you do this, you wanna go from a lower resolution to a higher resolution. We'll show you more about that later. And then more importantly, my favorite part, damage! Yes, we're gonna damage it. We're gonna add smaller details. We're gonna make it look like it's real worn armor. Then you gotta prep it for print and finally, you print it, you make it real. Super hype. Okay, I guess it's gone. But don't worry, I made a more thorough digital copy that I wanna share with all of you and that link is in the description below. Now that chart breaks down my basic step-by-step -step sculpting process from start to finish. But let me state that Sometimes I'll jump around in the middle, but generally that's my process. All right, enough chit chat. Let's get back into ZBrush and we can look at these steps a little more in depth. Now let me start by saying that I will be going over each one of these steps in more detail in future videos, but I wanna get you going. So the very first step is to create a generalized shape block out like I have done here. So this can be done in several different ways, masking and extracting, dynameshing a sphere, or just building a base mesh in another program. All these different processes will be covered fully in video five, creating an armor blockout. Now that you have a mesh to work on, it's time to start thinking big. Remember the poster? We wanna block out our larger shapes first. Now, when I do large shape blocking, I stay in Dynamesh mode. Now, Dynamesh is probably one of my favorite ZBrush features, and guess what? It's also in ZBrush Core. Simply put, Dynamesh allows you to freeform sculpt, and you don't have to worry about any topology. Sculpting in Dynamesh is perfect for large and medium details. So you can find Dynamesh underneath your tool palette in the Geometry subpalette. To activate it, simply click the Dynamesh button. Now I'll be making a bonus video covering more about the features Dynamesh and ZRemesh have because it deserves its own freaking segment. To give you some basics, Dynamesh has a resolution slider located here under the button. You can use this to up-res and lower the resolution of your mesh. Another amazing thing about Dynamesh is that you can use all of your normal sculpting and masking tools. Here are some of my favorites. So first of all, we have the clay buildup brush here. Now this brush is what I use to just build up clay, remove clay, and all that kind of fun stuff. This brush is great for blocking stuff out. Now here we have the move brush, and this brush is really great to just quickly move things around so you can get an overall good silhouette. And you can see that Dynamesh is just fixing the topology for us. 
Another brush that I frequently use is the inflate brush. Now this, as you can see, we can quickly inflate the mesh or deflate the mesh. Next we have the clip curve brush. And now what's great about this is it allows me literally to clip my geometry so that I can get some really great silhouette shapes. Now normally this smashes the geometry right into each other, but with DynaMesh, with it retopologizing it, it fixes that for us. Now the last thing I'm going to show you with DynaMesh is that you can easily mask and then move or rotate your geometry. What's going to be great here is that DynaMesh is going to completely retopologize that so it's now just an extrusion of our normal mesh. Don't be afraid to create multiple subtools while you are blocking out your large shapes. Subtools, what are they? Well, subtools are separate meshes or objects inside ZBrush. And what's amazing about these is that each subtool can equal to the maximum number of polys your system can handle. However, because they are separate, multiple subtools can't be sculpted on at the same time. Now under your tools palette, we have a sub palette called subtools, and this is where all of your subtools live. Now you can select them by simply clicking on them in the subtools palette. You can also use the eyeball to hide and show them. Or when you're in the canvas, you can alt click each subtool. Subtools make it easier to work on a complicated piece. Quick note, you can combine these later on to be one piece like I did here with the trim. I initially kept the main bracer face separate from the trim so I would have more control over sculpting each piece. While I am working on the larger shapes, I am constantly checking the model from multiple angles. Also, do not be afraid to hit V to go into silhouette mode. Your silhouette of your piece is extremely important in this phase and honestly can make or break the overall shape of your piece. After we are generally happy with our larger shapes, let's move on to our medium shapes. As I do this, I generally up the DynaMesh resolution. Now quick note, on DynaMesh resolution, if you go up and sculpt, then go back down, you will lose the higher resolution details. So normally you want to work from low to high resolution on your sculpt. Now sometimes you may jump back and forth to make fixes, but it's good to follow that general idea. Now all of the same ideas apply in this phase as the large. I am blocking in shapes and forms like you would with clay, trying to get a good overall read on the piece, but I'm still paying attention to silhouette and forms at every angle. One new thing I do is I start to create more definable planes. Um, this sculpture by John Asaro shows that you can break down organic shapes like a face into planes. And let me tell you, it is so important to have your overall shape read correctly and to have proper planarization before adding more details on top of it. Now you can continue to add detail, but if the base structure isn't there, your sculpt will not be nearly as strong. To planarize, I have two brushes that I love going to, and that's the H Polish brush, which I'm using here, as well as the Trim Dynamics brush. Now the Trim Dynamics brush is a little bit stronger, the H Polish brush is more for literally polishing your surface, but I love them both. Now a huge major important thing that I do that should not be overlooked is I'm constantly switching between my materials. Now there's a couple that I love going to, if you guys are more interested in that I can definitely direct you to them. But the most important thing to take from this is that all of your matte caps or materials are going to show you different things. Some of them are going to show you your depth, some of them are going to show you your highlights, some of them are going to really help you make sure your surface is smooth. So make sure to check them in multiple materials before you print your armor. Now that I am done with my medium and large shapes, I'm going to take it out of DynaMesh. So DynaMesh does this weird thing where it turns your topology into a giant grid. Now you really don't want to up resin sculpt on that. If you do, it's going to cause some weird pinching and you're going to have to go way too high in your poly count to get exactly what you need. This is where we use the magic of Z Remesher. Sadly, this is not in core, but the same ideas apply if you retopologize either in ZBrush or in an outside program but Z Remesher is currently in my workflow. Why is this so important, you might ask? Well, Z Remesh will recreate your topology and flow it with your sculpted details. Like DynaMesh, I'll be making a bonus video to cover how powerful this really is, but when you're sculpting, it's super important that your topology is in at least somewhat of a flow with your sculpt or else you're gonna end up with some really nasty pinching. I can also use Z Remesh to get a better control of my polygon count on my model. 
This means when I use it, I may lose some of my original sculpted details in my DynaMesh model. But don't worry, we can fix that. Found under your tool palette in the Subtool sub palette, ZBrush has this amazing feature called Project. This has to be one of my favorite things ever. Project literally allows you to project details from one mesh to another. Now before I Z-remesh a piece, I normally duplicate it so I can project the DynaMesh details back onto my Z-remeshed mesh. Now this won't change the underlying topology, only the surface details. I'll make sure to cover more of this in my future DynaMesh video. Now that we are out of DynaMesh and have multiple subdivision levels, we are going to take some time and clean up the sculpt. Now it's important that you save your lower resolutions while you're working. This allows you to go back and make larger changes to your mesh, as well as help you smooth out your mesh. What's great is that everything you do to your lower subdivision level affects everything above it and vice versa. The general rule of thumb is to do small details in a higher subdivision level and larger ones in a lower subdivision level. While working in high subdivision levels, you can also use this awesome brush called Select Rectangle or Lasso. This allows you to hide or show parts of your mesh as you're working. This can help reduce poly count on screen, so that way you're not gonna get nearly as much lag. To select this brush, make sure it's selected in your brush palette, and then you can use Control Shift to only show what you want, or if you hold Control Shift Alt, it will hide your selection and show everything else around it. Now just Control Shift on your canvas and it'll reveal everything back. After you've cleaned up your sculpt, added all of your tiny details and damage, then we can decimate this mesh and prep it for printing. We will cover more of this stuff in depth in future videos. The next video in this series is all about armor sizing and proportions, but hopefully this helps you get going more in ZBrush. Thank you all so much for watching video three, three in my series on digital sculpting for cosplay and costume creations. Now, if you missed the last one on ZBrush Basics, you can check that out right over here. And make sure to stay tuned and subscribe right over here because a new video will be dropping every week. If you have a suggestion for a video that you'd like to see, make sure to leave that in the comments below. Also, my new Patreon is live, so if you'd love to consider supporting me, I would love you for it. You can just go ahead and click this right above my head and it'll take you there. Finally, I work live! Make sure to come and check me out on Twitch so we can hang out and talk 3D printing. The link for that is below in the description. And seriously, once again guys, thank you so much for watching this, and as always, stay badass. My hamster died. Okay. Good morning, Mr. Cameron.